English lesson will teach you some cooking vocabulary, some phrasal verbs that are helpful for the kitchen, and it will teach you exactly how Americans actually sound when they're speaking about food and cooking. So let's get started. Today's English lesson won't just be me sitting down teaching you, I'm actually going to be cooking something. And today I will be cooking chicken noodle soup for my family. I don't think that there is a more American dish than chicken noodle soup. Let me know if you make this in your country or wherever you live. And it's a cold day out. There is snow on the ground where I live, so soup is always nice to keep you warm when it's cold. Now some people, when they cook, they like to follow a recipe to the T. If you do something to the T, it means you follow it exactly and you follow the rules or whatever it says exactly what you should do. In my opinion, the way that I like to cook is I like to just go off of memory, go off what I've done in the past and maybe not follow an exact recipe. I just wing it. If you say that you wing it, it means you just do the best that you can and you don't look up exactly how to do it. So for chicken noodle soup, I've got carrots, celery, some sad looking celery. And by sad, I mean it's a little bit old so it's not super fresh, crispy, and you know, it's more floppy and it's sad. And then instead of cooking my own chicken, I am being lazy. I have bought a rotisserie chicken a couple days ago. And my family enjoyed a lot of it, but now there's some leftover scraps that we can just put into the chicken soup so that we don't waste anything. And then instead of chopping up garlic, I have squeezable garlic. Again, another lazy cook move. Butter. For our soup broth today, I am using kind of a base. We call this bouillon, so you just add it to the water to give the water the chicken flavor. So instead of calling it broth, it's bouillon. I'm going to start by heating up my stove top. I've got a Dutch oven. It has a big lid for it too. And I love this thing for making soups. Because it's nice and heavy, it's easy to wash, and it stays really warm for the soups. And honestly, I think as long as you season your soups really nicely, which means you add a lot of salt, pepper, other seasonings. It makes it taste good and I think that is the key or the most important part to making a good soup. So we're gonna start by melting some butter. So I'm going to open up the stick of butter and I'm just gonna take off the paper. And I like to cut up my butter a little bit so that it melts quicker. So I've got a lot of butter going in the Dutch oven right now. I'll show you guys. And I'm just going to let that melt while I start chopping up the vegetables. I like a lot of carrots, so we're gonna do four carrots in our soup. Remember, I am not going off a recipe, which means I'm not following a recipe. I'm just going off what I like, which means I'm following what I like in my soup. I'm going to peel my carrots. This is a peeler. I think that's what it's called. That's what I call it anyway. So I'm just going to very quickly peel these. I'm not sure it's extremely important to do it perfectly since these are going in a soup. And that's the reason why I like making soups is because it doesn't have to be perfect. And I really like the fact that it uses up all of, you know, the vegetables and the meats and things that you have in your house that you might want to eat before they go bad. When a food item goes bad, it means it is rotten. So usually in the United States, our food has a best buy date. And I'll show you guys one of those in just a minute. So now that I have my carrots all peeled, I'm going to take my large chef's knife, which out, and I'm going to chop them up. Okay, next 
Now that I have the carrots and the butter melting and going, I'm going to chop up my onion. But I'm not just going to do it the old fashioned way, which means like the old regular way. We use old fashioned to say like what people would do without technology. I have this special chopping gadget. And I have to tell you, I love this gadget. And I bought it for a really cheap price many, many years ago. I think I got it for $10 at Walmart. And it works like a charm. If you say that something works like a charm, it means it works really well. It's almost like it's magic. A charm would be like a magic spell. I don't use that word very often, except for when I use the phrase, it works like a charm. Hopefully I don't start tearing up from these onions. So the reason why I said gadget, if you guys are unfamiliar with that word gadget, is because when we have something that's a piece of technology, even though this doesn't have power or batteries or any sort of electricity, but it's technically technology. When we have something that has technology that's new and we don't know exactly what to call it, we call it a gadget. So if you have a smartwatch or you see something with a smartwatch and you're not sure what type of smartwatch it is, you could say, hey, what's that gadget? It looks pretty cool. So this gadget is like a salad spinner and a chopper. It chops it with blades as you spin it. It's almost like a food processor, which uses electricity, but this one's just manual. If you say something is manual, it means you have to do it yourself. There's no power or there's no technology that just does it on its own. You have to do it. The man has to do it manual. And just like that, my onion is all chopped up. How convenient. So that phrase, just like that, hold on. It means that something happened really quickly and easy. See, and sometimes we use this phrase even if it wasn't quick and easy. <laughs> and just like that, we had a baby. That's not quick and that's not easy. But <laughs> it just means it feels like it happened really fast. All right, so we've got carrots onions. And the next ingredient is celery. And I'm going to use my gadget to chop the celery up as well. Remember, this is my sad, sad celery. Instead of throwing it away, I think it's still good to eat. We're going to use it in our soup today. The celery just gives your soup so much flavor, although I'm going to cut off this because it's looking a little funky. You say something's looking funky, especially a food. Like, ugh, that looks funky. It means you don't want to eat it. Funky can be good sometimes. Like, this music, it sounds funky. This means, like, you can dance to it, but if you describe food or a smell as funky, that's not good. It means you don't want to eat it. And it means it probably smells. So I watch a lot of cooking videos on YouTube. That's pretty much where I've learned how to cook. Chop it up my celery again. And I learned that most of the flavor that celery gives your food or your soup comes from its leaves. So you should not just pick off the leaves and throw them away. They're actually quite useful. And maybe you already knew that, but I thought I was surprised because I used to pick off the leaves and throw them away. And just like that, my celery is chopped. I wish I had a little bit more celery for this, but it will do. It will have to do. If you say something will do, that will do. It means it's sufficient. It's okay or it's enough. Okay, so now I have my celery, my onions, and my carrots. Let me show you guys. And we are just going to stir those up. 
We're gonna turn up the heat a little bit. This is called a knob. So turn up the knob means turn this thing that sticks out. And we're really gonna let this soften up. When you cook vegetables and they become easier to eat and bite into, we call that softening up. So I'm gonna let that happen off camera. I'll see you guys in just a minute. So now that my vegetables have just been simmering for a little bit, I am going to show you guys exactly how I make chicken stock. So I didn't want to dirty up another container. And this phrase, dirty up, just means use and have to wash again. I like to be efficient in the kitchen and not have to do too many dishes. So I'm going to use a spoon. And I'm going to add this chicken bouillon to my warm water here. Again, I don't measure, I think probably just a couple tablespoons. And this looks like a couple quarts of water. And I'm going to mix it up. I had to turn down my vegetables, the heat on the stove here, because it sounds like they were getting a little bit too hot. They're really sizzling now. This is taking a while to mix. There's still some chunks the bouillon in here and you want it to be really well mixed so that it has the flavor and the seasonings in there. Like I said, I like my soups to be liberally seasoned. And if you say liberal when it applies to season or flavor or adding something to your recipe, it means you have a lot of it. You are not conservative with adding it. saw one chunk in there. Hopefully it gets mixed up in the soup. Let me show you guys what I'm working with now. So this has been a chaotic cooking video so far because I'm not a professional cooking YouTuber. Maybe I'll link some of my favorite cooking YouTubers down below. Um, but right now I am going to get my chicken. And since it's a rotisserie chicken, it's already cooked, I have to pick it off the bones. So that means I just have to get the meat off of the bones and I'll get it into the pot. And then, where are my noodles? Ah. I have wide egg noodles. And yes, I only have half a bag left. I'll be adding those to the soup as well. So yeah, that's where we're at in the recipe. I'll see you guys, I'll check in once I get the chicken ready to dump into the Dutch oven. Okay guys, I am all washed up, which means I washed my hands up because they had so much chicken and juice on them. I'm just going to slowly mix it into my Dutch oven. Here we go. All right, now that that is in, I'm actually gonna let it simmer on the stove, which means I'm going to let it sit at a low temperature, so probably about a three out of nine or 10 on my knob here. I'm gonna let it simmer for uh, 10 to 20 minutes. And when it's starting to really boil down, so the chicken's shredded up, the onions are getting smaller, they're getting cooked into the soup, I am going to add my noodles. And then I'm gonna let that sit for six to seven minutes while they get soft. So like I mentioned before, I'm making this soup for my family for dinner and my kids are about to wake up from their naps, they're quite young, and everybody's going to come downstairs and it's going to be chaotic, so I'm not going to film that part, but I'll talk to you guys this evening and I'll let you know how everyone enjoyed the soup. I'll give you their reviews.